We as a church have been going through a small group, Tony Evans' book, and study the power of Jesus' names. A, I have done a parallel study with my sermons. I'll finish up next week about the power of praying in Jesus' name. You know, we were made to pray. In the garden, God created us in his image. He made our bodies to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. We were made to have fellowship with him. We have fellowship with him when we pray. Why do we come to church? I hope you come to church because you want to pray. Some people say, well, I come for the music. Any good worship music will lead you to pray. Any good preaching will lead you to pray. I come for the fellowship. Any good fellowship will lead you to pray. In the temple, they came to the temple to pray. Now, I know there's this big sacrificial system, but that was just to get in, just to get their prayers heard. They came to pray. I hope you've come here to pray. I hope you'll pray, and I hope you'll be with God. Uh, today, we're going to kind of do a little review where I've been. We're going to kind of do a little preview of next week's sermon. But most of what I want to talk about today is how we're to pray to the Lord. I want to pray to God like Jesus did. And I want us to look at that. And uh, Paul prayed this way. Jesus prayed this way. The great saints have prayed this way. And what they have done is that they have prayed both what I call in spirit and mind. You can call it praying fervently. Praying all in. Now I think all of us have had halfway prayers, haven't we? We've kind of prayed with other things on our mind. But that's not a good way to pray. Uh, I remember years ago, I had the privilege of having dinner with uh, Dallas Willard. And Dallas was having trouble sleeping through the night. And so he said, what I do is when I wake up in the night, I just start uh, meditating and, and start uh, praying the Lord's Prayer and meditate about what that means to me good thing to do. And I think it kind of helped him go back to sleep. And I think we've all had those times when we wake up and we sleep, we go back, come back and forth. But there need to be those times when we come to the Lord in prayer where we mean business. Jesus did when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. It says he prayed so fervently that he sweat blood drops. And so today we want to look at this idea of praying in spirit and in mind. And for some reason, this isn't working. Great. Oh, well, I'm going to need you. And there's a lot, so you'll have to stay with me. Okay. I've got nothing. Uh... Let's stand and read God's Word. We'll begin by reading 1 Corinthians 14, 15. Would you stand? Paul is talking about worship, but he's going to talk about prayer. He's going to talk about tongues. He's talking about it. Paul did everything. Everything he could do, he prayed. But listen to what he says. He says, Well then, what shall I, I do? I will pray in the Spirit. I will also pray in words I understand. I will sing in the Spirit, and I will also sing in words I understand. And then in Romans 8, 26, it says, And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings and cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for believers in harmony with his own will. God's blessing and God's word for God's people. You may be seated. The first type of prayer I want to talk about today is breakthrough prayer. Breakthrough prayer. These are prayers when you need to break through. You know, when you don't feel like your prayers are getting any higher in the ceiling, 
when you feel like God's not hearing you? Are there some things you can do to pray when that's happening? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. There are times when we pray, and I've, I've had people come to me, and they come afterwards, and I go, you know, I just don't feel like God hears my prayers. Well, pray a little harder. Uh, and, and we're going to try and look at that today, just see some things you can do. The first thing is that breakthrough prayer starts with God's will. Breakthrough prayer starts with God's will. Now, this is a review from two weeks ago. But two weeks ago, I prayed about the fact that the most important thing in prayer is God's will. Not your will, but God's will. I mean, we all want to come out, God, give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this. But that's not true prayer. True prayer is thinking God's thoughts after him. True prayer is desiring to do what God wants. Uh, Jesus said in John 15, 7, uh, but if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it may be granted. Jesus said, just remain in me and I'll tell you what, what needs to happen. And uh, James, Jesus' half-brother, wrote one time, he says, you don't get what you want because you ask amiss. You don't ask according to God. So let's just talk about breakthrough prayer for a minute. The next thing is breakthrough prayer begins by asking God. You have not because you ask not. Jesus told us to ask, seek, knock, do whatever we can. Next week we're going to talk about how, what he's going to talk about that we need to stay after it. We need to stay after that prayer. James, he says, uh, you want but you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You're jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. He says, you want all this stuff, and you want it, and you scheme to get it. He says, that's not the way to do it. He says, so you fight and wage war to take it away from them. He says, yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. We need to ask God for things. Not scheme, not try and trick, not try and do all those things. Ask God for it. And here's the point I want to make today, and I want to kind of stress this hard. Praying halfway does not lead to breakthrough prayer. I think it is important for you to pray. Uh, I haven't done this in a while, but I'm going to do a prayer school here in the next couple of months, maybe when people get a little less fearful of COVID. And I have a way I can help you to pray a planned prayer every day and it's good but that's not the only way you should pray when you go through breakthrough prayer you got to go through prayer and you can't do it halfway you remember what Jesus said in Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven: 37 you must love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul and all your mind Jesus wasn't about doing anything halfway. He said, if you're going to love God, love him with everything you got. In Revelation, Jesus was talking to the church, and their works were kind of lukewarm. And in Revelation 3, 16, he says, but since you are lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. I wonder how many prayers we try and pray to God and because we're just blah. He says, I'm not listening to that. And then James, he says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. He says, a righteous person, an earnest person, a fervent person, a fervent prayer avails much. When you pray, pray with all you got. Don't pray halfway. Pray like you mean it. Don't kind of think of God as somebody else. I'm, I'm telling you something. 
God is more real here than any of you. You may not be able to see him, but he's more real here than any of you. Speak to him in a way that, that, that is benefiting to that. And then kind of looking ahead to next week, persistent praying leads to breakthroughs. Persistent praying, not giving up. I do coffee with a pastor, a lot of y'all watch. Last week we've been looking at Jacob. And Jacob was known as a deceiver, a manipulator, schemer. And he had cheated, supposedly, I don't, that's quotes, but he had supposedly deceived Esau out of his blessing, blah, blah, blah. Esau threatened to kill him. He left, went to his Laban, Uncle Laban's house, was there 20 years. Time to come back. He's got to face Esau. Doesn't know what he's going to get in Esau. He's scared. Uh, because last time Esau said, I'm going to kill you. And so he's scheming. But then he prays. And he prays a very sincere prayer. And he asks God to protect him from his brother Esau. And he sends his family across the Jabbok Brook, and he's over there by himself. And a man comes to wrestle him. This is an interesting passage. And they wrestle all night, and they must be evenly matched. And it's getting towards daybreak, and the man says, you need to let me go. He says, check him. Jacob says, I'm not letting go. So he touches his socket of his hip, and walks with a limp for the rest of his life. And he says, I'm not letting go until you bless me. I'm not letting go till you bless me. And the man asked him, what's your name? He said, my name's Jacob. And uh, Jacob meant hill clutcher, deceiver, manipulator, whatever. He says, you're not going to be known by Jacob anymore, but you're going to be known as Israel. God rules. God rules your life. And then it was over. And then Jacob realized something. He was wrestling with God. Now, obviously, he's no match for God. God was letting him wrestle to work out his own stuff. There's sometimes you've got to wrestle with God. And sometimes you've got to hang on until God blesses you. Sometimes you've got to hang on to those prayers and be persistent until God hears you and answers your prayer. You know, praying is, is a key to life. Jesus prayed all the time. He prayed all night before big decisions. He got up early in the morning and prayed. Now, if he's the son of God and needed to pray when he was on this earth, how much more do we need to pray? I remember one time... Uh, Jesus went up on the Mount of Transfiguration. You remember that's when Peter kind of stuck his foot in his mouth. But if you read that passage, he starts praying at the Mount of Transfiguration and he becomes transfigured right before them. And they have this great time where he meets with Elijah and, uh, and Moses. And then they go down off the mountain. The, Messiah, the, the disciples are there, and there's a demon-possessed boy there. And they can't uh, cast the demons out of the boy. Jesus comes down, says, oh, you little faithless ones. And uh, he casts the demon out. The disciples come back later, and they say, why couldn't we do it? Why can't we do it? How can you just walk down and do this? And he just answered, and he says, Demons of this type take much prayer. Now, there's no record that he prayed before he cast him out. He just cast him out. But where did he pray? Well, he prayed up on the Mount of Transfiguration. He had taken care of that. Folks, we are to live. Now, listen to me. We are to live in prayer, which means that it would help us to live in God's character and God's power. We need both. We need to live in prayer because we need to have the character of God. 
Not only do we need to have the character of God, we need to live in the power of God. The power of God means we live in faith. And what's faith mean? It means we're confident that God is with us and God's going to hear our prayer. God's going to take care of us. God's going to be with us in all things. So I encourage you to live a life of faith, a life of prayer, and a life of fervency in your prayer. And the fifth thing I want to talk about right now is fervent, mindful prayer lead to breakthroughs. I, I like what Paul had written in 1 Corinthians 14. He says, well then, what shall I do? I will pray in the Spirit, and I also pray in words that I understand. I will sing in the Spirit, and I will sing with words I understand. He says, when I pray, I'm going to pray. He says, there are times I'm going to be taken up in wonder. I'm going to lose myself in my prayers. Words won't express. He says, and I'm also going to pray understanding everything I'm saying. He said, I'm going to do it both ways. You need to do that too. You need to let yourself go in prayer or you let the Spirit of God take over and you need to also understand everything you're praying. The second part of this sermon, which is not going to be as long, is what I'm going to call Spirit Helped Prayer. Now this is where it gets good. Oh, just kind of staring at me. This is good stuff. Change your life. You don't know how to pray, as you should. But it's okay, because God's got you covered. It's not dependent upon you. The Spirit will help you. Listen to what Paul says in Romans 8, 26. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father knows all hearts, who knows all hearts, knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us Believers in harmony with God's own will. In other words, God knows you need help in your prayer. He knows I need help in my prayer. Every day when I do my prayer time, the first time I go through the Lord's Prayer, I begin with our Father. And I begin thinking about our, because I realize I'm not praying alone. There are billions of Christians in this world, and every time I pray, I realize there's other people praying. I remember them when, when we were praying because we're all before the throne of God. And I go, our Lord. I said, I'm not praying alone. There's all these people praying. But then I realize I'm not praying alone to God. I pray to God the Father who's on the throne. There's Jesus at his right hand making intercession for me. And then there's the Holy Spirit that's praying for me. Now, this is how I imagine it goes. I'm praying. And I'm praying to the Father for some things. I'm praying for some things. And I think the Holy Spirit may be there saying, you know, Robert's praying for this, but he really means this. I'm serious. And I'm comforted by that. I'm comforted by the fact that I can mess up in my prayers. And the Holy Spirit's going to cover me. Does that comfort you? I mean, there's a lot of things that I have just felt like was God's will in my life that weren't. But the Holy Spirit's going to cover me. He's going to cover you. Because He's going to provide the words, He's going to provide the meaning, He's going to provide what you need. And that's God's will. There's several stories like this in Jewish tradition, but there's one in, I heard about a little girl. And her dad prayed with her every night and he was trying to teach her prayers. She's still a little too small to memorize the prayers and all. 
But she decided she wanted to start praying on her own. She didn't need her dad to pray. She wanted to pray on her own. And her dad was a little hurt by that. But he said, okay. And so he goes by the little girl's room. And the little girl's knelt down by her bed. And she's praying A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And he goes all the way through the alphabet. The next morning, her dad said, I heard you praying last night. I heard you praying in the alphabet. She said, yeah, Dad, I tried to remember some of the prayers you taught me, but I didn't remember them. So I know my ABC, so I just thought I'd give God the letters and he could make the words. Well, I think that's where we're at in our prayer life. Can you trust God enough for that? Give him the letters. And then he'll make the words. Be the best prayers you ever prayed. Would you pray with me now? Father, I come to you at this time and I thank you for the privilege of being able to speak with you. I know that that's why we were made. You made us because you wanted a family. You wanted someone to talk with. You wanted someone to have fellowship with. And Lord, I pray that we would do that. Lord, I pray for every person here that their prayer life would increase. That they would be able to pray in grace and truth and faith and confidence and power. Help them to pray fervently and help them pray with all wisdom. But most of all, Help us to pray knowing that we can trust you with any prayer we have to make it right. And I pray it in Jesus' precious name. Amen.